Hey friends, it's Miss Veronica here. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I know I sure have. It is time for Sunday school. So hopefully you got all your stuff in the mail this week. So go grab it. If you don't have it already, you should have our lesson. You should have an, a worksheet and a coloring page. And big kids, grab those Bibles, okay? All right, so go grab your stuff. All right, you guys. I have heard from some of you with those trivia answers. Keep sending them in. I have a new trivia for you. All right, so you got those thinking caps on? Here is our trivia question for this week. Jesus says that if our faith is as big as a mustard seed, we can move what? That's our question. What can we move? I'm going to give you a hint, okay? If you need to look it up, you can go to the book of Matthew, Chapter 17, verse 26. Send in those answers, and you'll earn some Bible bucks, all right? All right, so I have a question for you guys. Did you guys know that this week, St. Peter's Lutheran Church had a birthday? We did. We celebrated our 97th birthday this week. How cool is that? And... You know, this church has been here for all that time because of people who believed in Jesus. You know, in today's lesson, we're going to learn about somebody that didn't believe in Jesus, and he persecuted people that believed in Jesus. Do you know what that word persecute means? Well, tell you what, those of you that have your Bibles, open up to the back of your Bible. It's like a dictionary back there. It says glossary, okay? And we're going to go into the P's. And look up this word persecute. It is P-E-R-S-E-C-U-T-E. -E -E. Okay. Here's what it's, the definition is. It's to harm or destroy a person in body, possessions, or good name because of their belief. Christians were persecuted because they would not deny their faith in the triune God. Okay. So that word persecute means somebody does something bad against us for those that believe in Jesus. All right, so let me ask you another question here. Uh, don't tell me any names, okay? I don't need to know names or anything. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. But have you ever known people who are mean to you? Once people are mean to you, it's kind of hard to believe them. And it's especially hard to be their friend, right? Have you ever known someone who's changed? Who's changed and became nice? Um... Has someone ever stopped being mean? What was that person like after they changed? So I want you to think about that. Tell maybe talk to your moms or dads or your siblings about that. All right, let's grab our lesson and let's learn about what happened to somebody that was persecuting Jesus' people. Okay, so we are learning about Saul today from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 31. Here's what our lesson says. So follow along, okay? Saul believed Jesus was a false teacher who taught lies about God and pretended to be God's son. He wanted to stop the Christians from telling other people about Jesus. So he went from house to house through Jerusalem, dragging off people who believed in Jesus and putting them in prison. Saul wanted to attack the Christians in Damascus. So the high priest wrote letters for him, so that if he found any believers in Jesus, he could tie them up and bring them back to Jerusalem. When Saul came near to Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice calling, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men traveling with Saul heard the voice, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. The man took his hand and led him into Damascus. For three days, Saul was unable to see. He didn't eat or drink anything during this time. Then Jesus told a Christian in Damascus named Ananias to go and lay his hands on Saul so he could see again. Ananias was scared of Saul, but he obeyed Jesus. 
He went and laid his hands on Saul, and Jesus gave Saul back his sight. Ananias baptized him. Right there in Damascus, Saul began teaching that Jesus was the Christ, the Savior of the world. Some Jews got angry and made plans to kill Saul, but Saul found out and had his disciples lower him down in a basket through an opening in the wall. Saul returned to Jerusalem, but the Christians there were afraid of him. A devout Christian named Barnabas took Saul to the apostles and described how Jesus had appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. The apostles welcomed Saul, and he became known as Paul. Did you guys know that? I know you guys have heard a lot about the Apostle Paul, but did you know that he did all of this before he became a Christian? Before he started following Jesus? He was actually putting people in prison that didn't believe in Jesus? See, we can always change, huh? So a couple, I have another question for you. So God, God was at work in Saul, who became Paul, one of the greatest missionaries of all time. How is God at work in your life? I want you to think about that and maybe share that with your family, okay, and your friends. And if you don't really see how God's working in your life, think about ways that you can do that, okay? So this week, here's something else I want you to do. We all have our own names, and you see that Saul became Paul when he became a Christian. Well, the back of your lesson here tells you a little bit more about that. And you can read about that and down at the bottom of the front page about Saul becoming Paul. So my question to you is, do you know what your name means? Ask your moms or dads or grandmas and grandpas what your name means. Maybe why they named you that. Um, and you can always research it with your parents' help, okay? Go on and take a look at what your, Paul, what your name means, okay? And share that with your friends. All right, you guys, let's close in prayer. Are you ready? Let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and let's talk to God. Dear Jesus, thank you for calling Saul to spread your gospel message to the world. Thank you for calling me to be your child in baptism. Help me to share your gospel message to all the people in my world. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Bye. Have a great week.